So welcome back to another video and today we travel down to London to come and film the install, well certainly the last day of an install of a hybrid heat pump. So this is a gas boiler combined with a small four kilowatt heat pump working together to bring around 160% efficiency to this property. Now in this home here we've actually removed a floor standing gas regular boiler, it was an ideal Mexico, they're about 40% efficient, so the efficiency of this property is gonna be transformed. Let's go inside and take a look. So this was the location of the old floor standing boiler. It was sited just there. And now we've installed this gas combi boiler. So this is the ETEC33H. So this is the one that works with the hybrid system. We're gonna have a vertical flue going through the same place where the old flue went. And as you can see, all the pipe work here has been replaced. And this boiler is now sited and ready for its flue. We've also repiped the entire property. So because this is gonna be on a hybrid heat pump, we've had to improve the flow of the um, central heating water and also the system, because it was a really old system, it wasn't gonna be suitable for this new hybrid. So what we've done is we've repiped all the circs throughout the property, repiped all the radiators, and we've even replaced all the radiators in the property as well. So why have you gone for an SOS heat pump on this or a hybrid heat pump? Because this is not, this is not a normal heatable job. No, it's not a normal heat pump job. We do do the hybrid systems online, so you can actually buy one of these hybrid heat pumps on the website. What we've done here is this property is on the edge of London, well, it's in London, it's in Walthamstow, and it's solid brick construction, it's got wooden frames. The client had a really old, inefficient boiler. Yeah. Choices the client had was replace that for a high efficiency gas combi, but the client wanted to go a bit further and just reduce his dependency on gas. Now, we did a survey and we looked at a heat pump wasn't gonna be suitable without significant significant expenditure throughout the property even with the government's grant coming so, into it. insulation, new windows maybe? Floor insulation, new windows, roof insulation, probably even internal wall insulation. It's a solid brick construction and it's got solid floors on the and ground. And that's floor. not just the cost, it's actually the disruption of the house. I've actually done that in my house yeah. so I understand putting insulation on the inside of your property is quite um, uh, it, yeah, it takes up a lot of time and, and it's very intrusive in your property. Yeah. So what we're not saying here is that heat pumps aren't suitable for the UK's housing stock. What we're saying is there are individual cases where high efficiency gas combi boilers are a good choice. If you can, and then the, the next step up from that would be a hybrid system. So if you can't have a full air source heat pump, then installing one of these hybrid systems reduces your gas dependency and changes that system efficiency by up to about 160%. So it's just different solutions for different customers. Yeah, different solutions for different customers and it's tackling the problem of net zero. This is a transitional product. So do you want to take me around and show me the installation? Yeah, let's go and check it out. So we've got a boiler in here. So this is just a, is this just a standard combi boiler then? This is just a standard combi boiler, yeah. So essentially it's a 33 kilowatt HB. So it's the hybrid heat pump boiler. It's a combi boiler. So it's about 93% efficient on its own. It, yeah. It's gonna do all the hot water in the property. It's also gonna support the, the air source heat pump to be the most efficient setting. So it guarantees to run on the cheapest setting. So why why would you just not put a standard combi boiler in? So a standard combi boiler would work absolutely fine in the property. Yeah. And that's a choice for the majority of consumers. For a consumer who's looking to do their bit, so help towards net zero, reduce their dependency on gas, the hybrid unit works really well without the expense or the intrusion of having a full air source heat pump. Right then, let's go and have a look at some system. Yeah. Yeah, so any of the pipe work that's microbore from the old system, that's coming out because it's not going to work with the hybrid system. So yeah. all the circs and all the radiator tails are being replaced for appropriate size. Yeah, so I noticed upstairs there's loads of they put loads of new copper in. So yeah. this system is full copper. There's yeah. no plastic pipes at all in this. No plastic this pipes. This is real high-end install. Yes, this is a bit of a project for heatable as well. So the reality of this install is that 
we are data collecting at the same time here. So we want to know how efficient is this system going to be in this customer's home. Now, this for us is above and beyond what we would normally do in a system um, because first of all, we wouldn't have attached a hybrid to it if we didn't think if it, if it was going to be, if it wasn't going to work properly, we've had to upgrade it. But Heatable has actually invested some money into this job to get the data and further understand how these products can work. So I can see here, this is where the old radiator was. Yeah, this is the old radiator, and again, this is the old micro ball pipe work that's all been removed. So there was one radiator in this room. So this would have been quite small, actually, wouldn't it, for this room? Small radiator, yeah. Now, what we've done is we've, we're replacing all the radiators in the property. And first of all, people are going to look at these and think, why are they not a high efficiency convector radiator? Well, there's two reasons. One of them is what we've done is we've increased all of the sizes of the radiators throughout the property. And in this instance, and upstairs, we're going to take a look in a minute, we've actually installed three radiators as opposed to one. The reason they're not a white stainless steel press convector is the client is ultimately paying for this job and the client has specified he wants these radiators. So what we've done is size them in a manner to get the efficiency for the system because this is another reality around heat pumps and going green. Look at this property, it's very well finished. It's a stunning home inside. The client doesn't want white press steel radiators. We've provided a mid-ground solution here for him. To so get in an ideal world, you'd build big massive triple radiators on here and we'd get the lower the lowest floor temperature possible. Yes, and that would give you more efficiency with the system. But again, this is about being real, you know, being real and being yeah. practical about these solutions. And this, I think, is a good compromise. Here's some more examples of realities around being considerate and working around problems when you're installing these high efficiency technologies. As you can see here, you've got very patinaed single glazing. It's not very energy efficient, but it gives the house the look the client wants. Yeah. They have installed some secondary glazing. And these are the new radiators that are going on. As you can see, all the pipe work is all brand new. So we're going to get, we're keeping the look, we're bringing in the efficiency, and the client is happy, and that's the main. That's the main uh, and like you say, it, it's not all about, you've got to please the customer. The customer wants what they want. Yeah. End of day. So if they want a fancy radiator, they want a fancy radiator. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so what we've done is tried to make them a size that's going to give the output that we need in the constraints that we've got, and that is the solution that we've come to. So we talked earlier about this property being a solid brick construction. Well, if you're interested to find out the construction of your home's walls, and you can do that pretty easily by taking a quick look at them. Now, if you see these bricks here, these are stretchers. That's the wide part of the brick. If they're throughout your whole construction of your wall, then you likely got a cavity. If you don't have stretchers throughout and you've got these featuring regularly, these are headers, this is the end of the brick, then this denotes that you've got a solid brick construction wall. I'm having to be up here because obviously the guys are working down below and we don't want to get in their way but we've actually got the air source heat pump onto the roof now the guys have got the flow and return um, coming up from the combi boiler so they're going to go into the back of this unit we're just mounting it to the feet i've ordered the wrong feet and didn't supply the bolts so they're having to use their own we're going to get that sorted in a minute we've got dan here from alfred he's just arrived as well so he's going to run us over how this unit works Yeah, you all right? All right, so Dan's joined us now from Alpha. The guys have got the heat pump onto the roof. They're just connecting up the flow and return for that. And we thought we'd just take the opportunity to cover off how this system works. And also, and we've not prepped you on this, <laughs> Alan asked us before why we've gone for a hybrid heat pump on this property. Okay, all right, good question. And this is your project at Alpha. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a solid brick wooden window mm -hmm. it's in an area i think it's like a it's not conservation but there's restrictive covenants on what your house can and can't look like client wanted to upgrade their system they had a floor standing ideal mexico right okay 10 mil micro bore mm -hmm. uh, and wanted to go green where possible yeah. and get some efficiency reduce their dependence on gas mm -hmm. so we've had some questions saying why didn't we fit a full heat pump 
Oh, but yes, yeah, so, but I mean, it's the obvious answer is cost there, isn't it? Yeah. So moving with an E-Tech hybrid from a floor standing boiler, we're leaping, we're leaps and bounds ahead in technology. Um, to put a full heat pump in this property, the level of insulation upgrades and stuff as well. And I think we'd looked around it outside, external wall insulation is pretty much off the cards, isn't it? With yeah. the intricate details of the building. Um, there's coving inside, there's all sort of wood panelling everywhere. So you've got to go, if you're going to go internal insulation, you can't really do it. Mm. Um, so it does just come down to cost. And I think we were talking earlier on, Alan was asking some questions around, you know, could you put a heat pump in this? And, and the answer is, you, you probably could, um, but you'd be spending a lot of money and making a lot of cosmetic changes um, mm -hmm. to the property. So what we've done is put an E-Tech hybrid in. We've repiped it, which is all mm -hmm. the noise in the background at the moment, because it was on 10 mil. Yeah, so yeah. we've sort of made the best effort we can. Mm -hmm. Where we've had to compromise a little bit is the client specified his own radiators. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a cast, they're not a cast, they're a steel classic look sort of radiator, mm -hmm. traditional look mm -hmm. radiator they're not the ideal one we would pick in terms of efficiency, but at the end of the day, it's got to be sympathetic to the property mm -hmm. and they'll still function. Yeah, yeah, thanks thanks to the controller, really. Thanks so to this, and that's what brings us on to this now. So, <laughs> just dead brief, because um, some people might already watch this, it might be the first time they've heard about hybrid. Yeah, How yeah. does the hybrid work? So, real simple, it's a, it's a heat pump and a boiler. Has the ability to work together, but the clever bit is inside the controller, so we input our gas and electricity prices. So whatever the customer is currently paying for their gas and electricity prices goes into that little controller. Then every time we ask that controller to call for heat, it simply looks at outdoor temperature, what flow temperature it needs to achieve on the, on the weather comp, and then which product is cheaper to run at that moment in time. And then they work in tandem. So the air source heat pump will do the heating of the property, mm -hmm. but when it's required, the boiler will do the heavy lifting. Yeah, that's it, so. And the air source doesn't do the hot water? No. So the boiler, you still have a combi boiler. The combi boiler still does 100% of your hot water demand. Yeah. So it's your instantaneous hot water. You don't have to worry about storing it and on and off times and things like that. Um, and then what the heat pump will do is when it's milder temperature, probably like today, is perfect. It's probably like 14, 15 degrees. Yeah. That little heat pump will probably run 100% of the heating. It won't need the backup of the boiler. Right, okay. Then, and if the temperature dropped? Yeah, so what might happen is the heat pump still might be cheaper to run. What our controller does is every 20 minutes it checks, am I raising temperature? Is my flow temperature raising? And if for whatever reason it's not, it will bring the boiler on as backup. So we're still in, we're in hybrid mode. We're still saving energy against having a boiler on its own. Right, okay. And then the worst case scenario is it was absolutely freezing. The heat pump could never do it. <coughs> the boiler kicks in and you've still got heat in your coffee. Yeah, yeah. So, so and, and the average position over a year, I can't remember the exact stat. Was it about 60% less dependency on the space heating for gas? Yeah, yeah. So on, a, on an average sort of two, three bedroom house, this probably being more towards the more uninsulated end because of the single glazed windows. Yeah. We're looking around 50% of the year, 50 Reduction. to 60% of the year, the heat pump will do 100% of the demand. Wow, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? So what the client's going to get here is a really, really efficient system. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some green offset, got some, some credentials going in there for the fact that he's not fully on gas. Mm -hmm. He's got a bit of independency away from gas. That's it. And it's almost like a very transitional product, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. in five, 10 years time, if the client decides he wants to change these windows, he wants to do some insulation, then he can sort of start moving to the heat mm -hmm. pump. What we've done here for them is we've piped it up in such a fashion that that would be pretty simple to do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. right now, today, this client had a 40% efficient boiler. He's now going to get up to potentially 160%, isn't he, on the right mm -hmm. sort of conditions and the right yeah, day. Yeah, so yeah. massive saving. Um, Alan's, we'll, we'll go up. The heat pump's getting installed now. We're going to connect it up um, and then hopefully by the end of the day we'll have the heating and the hot water back on with the heat pump running. The guys have got a bit more work to do to get us there but we'll catch up in a bit. Okay, so we're on the roof. This, this is the hybrid unit. It's got its feet mounted on it and it's going to go against this wall here. George is just doing the pipe work and insulating that now. So we've brought the flow and return up. Um, so the boiler is just below us here. Um, all that's going to get boxed in and insulated later on. But this is just the unit, I just wanted to cover it off dead quick. Mm -hmm. um, what size heat pump is this? Output size, so it's a four kilowatt heat pump. Output, input is 2.7? The most it can draw from the grid is 2.3. 2.3? So 2.3 kilowatt is about 12 amps, is it? 
10.3 amps. 10.3 amps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Divide by 250. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> low electrical draw, mm -hmm. but has got an efficiency rating. What's the cop rating on this? So, the, the seasonal coefficient of performance is 4.14. Which is 414%. Mm -hmm. So, for every one you put in, you get four back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, 2.3 in, four kilowatt out. And then this is what's going to do the bulk of the, like we said before, it's going to do all the cycling for the, for the heat in the property, mm -hmm. but it does the hot water. And it's just connected on these two insulated flexes here. That's it. They'll go in and then does it, it's got a weather sensor in this as well? Yes, yeah, so this little tiny wire here on the back just sticks out the back. It's just our weather compensation probe. So that's just reading the outside temperature at all times. So as standard, this comes fully weather comp. Mm -hmm. And it will read the external air temperature, mm -hmm. the internal temperature. Yeah. And then the smart tech controller, that's what's making the decision on use this much from the boiler, use this much from the heat pump, or yeah. heat pump only, or boiler only. Yeah, yeah. So to not get too technical, your boiler has an efficiency of roughly 90%. So if that's running on gas that's at 10 pence per kilowatt hour, this heat pump needs to be roughly over 300% efficient to make it viable to use the heat pump. Because of the cost of electric, because it's so three times as much. You got it. So right. simply our controller is looking at, can the heat pump beat the gas boiler right. every time we call for heat? So, and, and you guarantee it's always going to be on the most efficient setting? That's it, yeah. One, that logic is in the controller, so you can't, you can't override it. Cool. And then how noisy are these? You, you won't even hear it. Really? Yeah. And it's, it falls under permissional, uh, permitted development rights, so it's just got to be That's it. Look, two metres from a window? Yeah, so because we've got a barrier here and it's not visible, the, the distance is three metres. Right, okay. Fantastic. So you've got plenty of space. You've got plenty of space. So super quiet, they're really basic, they don't really need servicing, just cleaning out? Yeah, so no servicing like you would on a gas boiler where you've got analysers and checks to do like that, but yeah, yeah just the general clean and, and maintenance of the unit really. And do you need to put glycol in these? No, so we you, you can put glycol in, it's an option for the installer, however we do supply a freeze valve that's, that's fitted inside the heat pump at the right correct positioning. Right, okay. um, and that tends to be what most installers like to go for. The issue if you've got a heat pump that needs glycol is if you ever and it drains it down and mm -hmm. doesn't put it back in, mm -hmm. it freeze, expand yeah, first. Yeah, that is a, that is a problem. Yeah. So this is just st straightforward inhibitor and That's usable it. water. Yeah. Fantastic. No problems at all. So we're gonna get this installed today, get it set up. Um, we've got to shoot off now, so we're not actually going to be here for the end result. We've got to get back to Warrington, but George has kindly offered to take over the camera skills with his iPhone and send us some footage and we'll do a voiceover once it's all done and set up. We'll get you.